when we do the creative services, when we do the branding and naming, as well as the product uh, uh, innovation side, uh, on we have a step jump leap process. On the leap side, we build these covalent graphs, which are just amazing uh, visual representations of three, four, six months worth of research. And we uh, show all the data synthesized in a navigational map. And that gives us our roadmap of what problems need to be solved and what are priorities for the companies that we work with going forward. And this it's proved invaluable. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey everybody, this is Max Pittman from Write For Me, and you're listening to another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast, where we meet the experts who are making things happen and scaling their businesses. And today we're talking about Adam Innovation with Jody Daros, who is the CEO at Adam. And we're also talking with Yanni Daros, who is the president at Adam Innovation. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you, Nisa. Thank you for having us. It's our pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah, the husband and wife duo at, at, at Adam Innovation are here. And um, this is a venture that they started 20 years ago. Um, and Adam Innovation is a full service research and development company and have taken um, many products to market, generated rev- uh, billions in revenue for their products that they've uh, helped build and take to market from conception to, to scale. And so I'd love, love to dive into what some of those you know, some of the things you guys have been focused on for the last last 20 years. Um, but before we jump into like the organization itself and, and your focus, you know, our community is built of entrepreneurs, executives, you know, like yourself, lots of also sales and marketing leaders too. So, you know, Jody, I'd love it if you can tell our community a little bit about yourself and, you know, some things you're focused on as CEO, and then we'll hand it over to, to Yanni. All right. Well, um, Jody Darrows, I've, I've been in the business for uh, 30 plus years. Uh, Yanni and I met uh, way way back when in college and uh, kind of went into respective fields of um, advertising design and, and he in product development. Um, and uh, we ended up getting a call to move out to Arizona and uh, work for a startup company, a startup medical company. And in that process, um, we basically took our collective um, backgrounds um, and decided that uh, Arizona needed a little infusion of uh, what we were used to from the East Coast, the you know the big cities. Um, and so we decided to start our firm, Adam Innovation. And um, that was back in March 0303. And uh, we just hit the ground running and um, kind of never looked back. And so we he- here we are 20 years later. Um, Basically, we we help customers bring a product to market and commercialize. Um, and by doing so, we we are a little bit of soup to nuts, where uh, we are building a product, but ultimately a lot of customers who come to us um, are in need of building a company. So that's where um, my services come in and our team, where we we develop a a name, not a brand, and a whole corporate identity, um, not just a product uh, that you know goes through manufacturing and then they don't know what to do with it. So we help them develop it to the point where they actually understand that they all need to focus on sales and marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, 30 years of experience in that whole arena of um, sort of branding, graphics, marketing, et cetera. Super interesting. I'd love to kind of dive into, you know, kind of the origin story, right? You mentioned uh, a little bit about like, uh, you know, your life in Boston and and what's been, what was going on there to, you know, what you saw in the marketplace in in Arizona and why you chose that market. Before we dive into that, Yanni, what about yourself? Love to give you, give yourself the opportunity to make an introduction. Yeah. I mean, my background, 30 plus years, product innovation, taking concepts, uh, ideas all the way and converting them into reality. So when we came out here, worked for the medical startup, it was supposed to be 18 to 24 months. And then we'd sail off into this proverbial sunset, as they always say. 
but uh, that didn't happen. And uh, we found ourselves, you know, being integrated into the community here. And we found that there was a lot of need. Uh, it was a growing, uh, you know, uh, uh, early stage uh, area for startups and corporations that really didn't have uh, anybody that could do deliver on the world-class uh, creative services that we were used to working mm -hmm. on on the East Coast. So kind of planted a stake in the ground and launched Adam Innovation in uh, 030303 and haven't looked back. So uh, we built the organization around at a very high level doing in-depth user market research so we validate uh, ideas before a lot of investment is done uh, and wasted. Uh, we then quickly evolve into proof of concept prototyping, a full product development suite, uh, get into the branding, identity, packaging, uh, work through all the hyper, hyper prototyping. Uh, there isn't anybody that can do prototypes faster and more cost effective than us, that's quality. And then we get into the rapid tooling and our handoffs typically are uh, pilot runs to make sure that uh, everything is delivered uh, what we promised uh, to our customers. Wow, I mean, it sounds like you two are just experts in building products, but also experts in building businesses and successful businesses for your clients. And we have a great team around us that have, uh, have we've worked through over the years and uh, we're proud of what we've done. And, and I think our portfolio and client list uh, is, is proof of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, thinking about like your, your full service process uh, where it really begins is, you know, that, that research process and identifying like the product market fit, but also identifying, you know, how to think about the market as well. Um, it seems like that's probably the most like foundational piece, you know, of the business, because without that, you're not going to necessarily know who's, who's going to be the benefit or the beneficiary of the feature product. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Max. Uh, we've heard stories through the years where companies spend all this time and uh, money and, and focus on a solution that they feel is right for the market. But then once they launch it, they discover that they're way off mark. Um, so we pioneered a solution called Stream Research, and it's proprietary to Adam. And we've been uh, doing this for, what, 12, 13 years, Jody? So yes. We we can we're the one of the only firms that can do uh, user market research concurrently with uh, the creative process. Typically, you do the research up front, throw it over the fence, and then a group of people start working on the solution. But you know nowadays you only get one shot at getting it right with social media and exposure that everybody gets online. So it's a very long process if you follow the traditional methodology. Uh, and once you get to the end, this take years and a lot of investment and there's a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And we, we mitigate that risk by doing our process concurrently with the you getting user feedback and testing ideas very rapidly. Uh, so we can get to market earlier with the solution that the market is expecting and generate revenue sooner. So we have access to 40 million U.S. consumers and growing. Uh, so we can dial in uh, B2B type initiatives or B2C side. We actually do more B2B, uh, interestingly enough, but for some very uh, well-known brands as well as startups uh, from that standpoint. So, Yeah, I was going to ask a little bit about like who would that ideal customer be for the stream product? Because I would assume it would be a bit more B2B and maybe even taking like you know, software solutions, you know, to market from an enterprise perspective. Like, tell me, I guess, a little bit about like, you know, the startups maybe you're working with versus maybe the enterprises that might be leveraging this tool. Sure. Um, we've worked on startups uh, looking to identify, they have a specific technology, but they're not sure how they were going to position it or how they would market it to their end customers. Mm -hmm. So we go through this uh, community, we recruit people in that are their projected uh, customers. We Go through a whole process on on uh, attitudes, routines, measures, things like that that they do in their daily habits, and then we start infusing the ideas once we hear the problems that they're facing, and then once they 
have that, then they react to them and give us recommendations on how we can improve on those ideas. And that's our rapid process that out the end comes uh, validated solutions. So uh, personal security devices for consumer products, uh, you know, home technology appliances. Um, so these are some of the groups that we've worked with like LG and um, um, UBS LG. Bank. UBS Bank, uh, when you talk about enterprise solutions, they hired us. Uh, that's on the other extreme of our services, but a global largest wealth manager in the world came to us to, to uh, build a community of high net worth individuals to test their first mobile investment app. And mm -hmm. we had to build communities uh, if, uh, that were integrated from Europe, Asia, and North America of high net worth individuals. So, uh, that was probably the most grueling and challenging uh, community that we built, but probably the one of the most rewarding because we knocked it out of the park with what they were uh, expecting to build uh, from their first mobile app. So, mm -hmm. and when you think about like the stream research product, um, like I assume you're getting data. Um, that's both probably qualitative and, and quantitative that you use in the product development. Tell me a little bit about like maybe some of the data that, that you guys are able to aggregate from your communities to help the enterprise. Uh, sure. So, I mean, it is an ideal platform and it, it embodies uh, pretty much the most effective uh, methodologies. Uh, we do surveys, polls, questionnaires, forums, di discussion boards, all in this uh, contained community. Um, and you are absolutely right. We do the qualitative, quantitative insights. So we really build on the foundation of the problems that we're solving. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we can actually build, uh, uh, when we do the creative services, when we do the branding and naming, as well as the product uh, uh, innovation side, uh, On we have a step jump lead process. On the lead side, we build these covalent graphs, which are just amazing uh, visual representations of three, four, six months worth of research. And we uh, show all the data synthesized in a navigational map. And that gives us our roadmap of what problems need to be solved and what are priorities for the companies that we work with going forward. And this, it's proved invaluable. There's, I don't think, Jody, there's been one project that we worked with that we didn't change the course of how they were going to market uh, with their products and ideas, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, it's, and it's an agnostic process, process. Agnostic meaning, you know, we can go from, you know, a, a bank investment uh, app um, and all the way to um, cities, where which is... Uh, one thing we're currently involved with, um, where we're understanding the community and how to build out the, the future of the city and um, talk to the community and bring in the community and have these discussions. Um, so um, there's not officially a product at the end of that one. Um, whereas in a lot of what we do, we're, we're helping to develop and iterate um, a, a design project and a um, uh, manufacturing process, et cetera. Um, so we really run the gamut of um, what that research entails and what the communities bring to the table. Mm. We deliver yeah. different so outcomes. Adam is really focusing on commercializing emerging technologies, brands, and services. Uh, so that's that's really at the focus of what we do. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like ultimately, like you guys are delivering confidence uh, for your clients um, and the ability for them to get to market faster, uh, ideally, um, to, I assume, on the back end, generate revenue more efficiently and effectively as well. Yeah. What, what and in, in many cases, I'm sorry, um, by having this be a community, um, we're building the ambassadors, uh, right? The early adopters, um, because they they get to um, get their hands a little dirty and and be part of the iterative process. So of course they're gonna go out and um, share this with their network. Um, so that's very fun and exciting to see that when that happens. Well, this definitely sounds like it's it's the secret sauce, right? Um, but you tell me like, why would 
you know, a customer choose Adam, you know, over, over the competition, right? Is, I know this is a piece of the puzzle of, of the broader picture, because obviously there's design, there's engineering, there's prototyping, there's launch, right? Um, so it's definitely full service, but like how, why would someone, you know, choose you guys over the competition? Well, I think uh, our portfolio stands for itself. Um, and as you do, do mention, there is a process that we go through. Uh, that starts off with research and goes all the way through conceptualization, strategy, design, engineering, uh, all the way through to a launch. Uh, we've delivered on those promises over the years, and our customer list is uh, a reflection of those successes that we've had. Uh, there are some customers that we're still working with after 17 years. Uh, I don't know a lot of people that say that they they had that opportunity, um, and I think better, you know, the more telling sign is, you know, if you look at our customer list, right, Jody, a lot of it is word of mouth. Uh, right. You know, it's this person recommended us to this one and, and the kind of exposure that we've gotten has been phenomenal over the years. Um, and I think one of those are the fact that we've had such big wins with our, our stream research process that has fed the rest of the creative services that we deliver for our customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely speaks for itself. And, you know, I know from our conversations, you mentioned like you guys have done, you know, over 300 products uh, and services to market. You've run tests, concepts, get them to the market and generated, you know, billions in opportunities and sales, uh, you know, for your customers. So there, yeah, that, that definitely speaks for itself for sure. You know, and as you've grown kind of through word of mouth, like organically, you know, where, what are you guys focusing in on today? Like, and then what's, what's like the challenge, I guess that, you know, you're facing, is it, you know, um, I don't, I don't know how like the, you know, the general overall markets affect you guys as a business, but I'm just kind of curious, like what's, what's top of mind for you guys? Uh, maybe that's a question for, for Jody as CEO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a, it is an ongoing question, right? Uh, we have seen market shifts, um, but at the end of the day, um, we are not going to see innovation go away. Um, and we're, we're heavily into the startup communities uh, where we just see every single day um, new and exciting um, innovation products you know, coming to market. Um, our focus has always been sort of a hardware, you know, um, bring it to manufacturing processes, commercialize it, et cetera. Um, but we've evolved and, you know, we're, we're helping um, companies just come to market with the full suite of services that we have. Um, so, um, you know, regardless of the economic uh, times, whatever they are, depending on what news you read, um, we are there's always going to be something new and fresh, a new idea that needs to um, go through the process and uh, come out on the other side um, and, and uh, um, get out to a consumer uh, yeah. or a target audience. And, um, and I think, you know, with all this discussion about the economy and the downturn, but if you look back over the last, we've been through many cycles, uh, Max, Jody and I and the team. Uh, so, uh, weathering 20 years of ups and downs. And uh, we've, we've seen that the more aggressive companies that uh, really double down and start to push forward initiatives that primes them for when they come out of a recession are the ones that have really succeeded over the years. And using the tools that we've had uh, allows them to make smarter decisions you know, people want to make uh, cheaper, faster, you know, more potent des decisions, but a lot of the times they forget the smarter part. And that's where our process allows them to do uh, that in confidence uh, based on the roadmap that we give them. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that perspective. You're right. I mean, in innovation is, is never going away. New ideas are never going away. Um, and, you know, hearing like, look, you guys have been around for um, 20 years plus, you've been through multiple recessions during that time. Um, I read a really interesting article um, 
that actually came out after um, or the recession in 2009 in the Harvard Business Review about like the best performing companies that like faced recessions in the 80s, you know, to the dot com bubble to 2000 and 2008. And the ones that like are the one like companies like Domino's uh, is like a very easy one versus like companies like Sears, you know, the ones who maybe play a little bit more, you know, only focus on defense versus playing, you know, only offense. There, I think there's a, a balance that needs to be done with. Um, mm -hmm. How to, you know, think about a recession because markets are going to go up and down and how you can prepare the business for those ups and downs is by, you know, even when you are in a recession and you want to come roaring out of it, there's definitely some offense that, you know, you can still play while also playing some defense too and not like yeah. cutting everything, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And it's ex exciting for us. I mean, we're right here um, on, on campus with one of the largest universities in the country. Um, and we we see these ideas coming out the doors every single day, yeah. um, and um, and it's exciting. I mean, there are you know fresh people coming to the community of uh, innovation and development, um, and they're coming out of school with these ideas in in hand, mm -hmm. right, ready to develop them. Um, and uh, to Yanni's point, there's corporations who are. They need to evolve. They need to continue to um, market to a, a target audience, but they also need to keep in perspective that that's going that's changing and evolving. And how do they do that? And mm -hmm. so we help them do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's talk about how I guess things. I need, are to, I need to pause real quick. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, I'll. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to keep talking, but I just need a minute. Um, so I'm just going to. Sure. I don't know. The, just you're fine. Just go on mute. You're good. Um, okay, I'm gonna go on mute. Talking. I actually have to step away from the computer. Yeah, so. if you're if you're not talking, then uh, it'll be either Yanni or myself on camera. So okay. Yeah. Um let's so yeah, let's let's talk about that really quick and, and thinking about like you know how how things are are changing and evolving. And it's you know, I was you know with AI, right? Like uh, companies, you know, individuals are always going to need your help, right? Like, I think that's just a fact because in innovation is not going away. But like, how is AI, you know, playing or, or affecting your business? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that's uh, the jury's still out, but it's it's definitely a tool that we need to in, embrace and adopt as we go forward. Um, it's only going to allow us to uh, uh, enhance the type of services that we have. One, either with uh, content generation, uh, that we can come up with more informed and uh, targeted information on that, or, you know, help generate some creativity. Um, it says that, you know, people are saying you get two sides of the coin. One, it's going to put people out of business, which it may, uh, or the ones that really are going to succeed are the ones that really embrace the tools. And we've Adam has always embraced tools, uh, so we don't see any difference uh, from that uh, to where where we are today. So, yeah, i same here, right? I think that's you know when it comes to AI, that's that's the biggest piece is it allows and enables us to do experimentation and it helps us you know um, test different content variations and formats and topics to you know determine the best content approach based on goals, based on real data, based on your competitors. Um, and it can do it at like superhuman speed. So um, mm -hmm. that's that's definitely how how we're thinking about using it. Sounds like that's you know similar for yourself, but I think even more broader. And um, you know how is AI enabling you know um, you know maybe other developers or people who you know are developing products um, and leveraging tools like AI to to help them with that versus you know utilizing services like yourself. Have you seen that affect your business at all? Uh, not currently. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, the the different companies that we're working on are still in an exploratory stage on understanding how they can adopt the tools. Mm -hmm. uh, we are embracing it uh, wholeheartedly and uh, still working through exactly how to apply because each each project is different, has unique challenges, and so you can you can get caught up a lot in uh, diving into uh, the the different nuances of the AI, but ultimately it's speed to market, right? So we'll use AI to help us accelerate the process even faster than when we usually go. But ultimately at the end, we have to deliver results. So AI is a tool. It has to be implemented in a certain way and, and 
given the the prompts and and the goals. Uh, but then it's the execution. So you can build the the most perfect solution, but if you don't market it and you don't get the sales behind it and the dollars, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, so that's really the key with leveraging what AI is presenting everybody today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense, and uh, interesting to see and hear how how you're leveraging it on kind of the the pro. I'm um, sorry, on the marketing side of things, and con and and thinking about like maybe even handling, you know, uh, uh, generating like insights and look to helping to improve content and performance and results, and ideally to maybe even analyze audience engagement, right, and provide feedback to to optimize, you know, your your own research or the you know, the content you guys are producing too. Yeah, there is no perfect solution. We're yeah. using all the tools that we can. Uh, some of the AI engines aren't really current, right? So they, they're they kind of dated. Um, and I think that's where we augment our services because we build real-time current live communities that can react uh, on, the, on the drop of a dime. Um, with the the engagement that we we push out to those communities and those uh, participants, and we motivate them by letting them use the the voice of the customer. AI isn't going to do that. You will never get the voice of the customer from the end user. I mean, that's it'll give you an aggregate. This is what you know has been heard, but you know, whether it's uh, Mary down the street or Bob or this and that. Uh, the our end customer wants to hear from them, yeah. and and I think that's really the power and the platform that we built. Yep. So how was how are you guys thinking? I guess about the next you know couple of years and in, in you know growing and and scaling the business. Like I'd love to talk a little bit about that as we we tend to wrap things up here. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's for you, Jody. Uh, yeah, sure. The um, scaling um, that's always a a hot topic, right? What's what's next, um, and and how do we grow? Um, I I think um, we have the multitude of services, and um, they all work congruently uh, with one another. But we do have the opportunity to, you know, sort of branch out a little bit and um, take the stream research and and really push that, and you know, kind of create some verticals from within. Um, and then allow each of those to scale um, off, obviously utilizing all the services that are necessary for each project. Uh, we optimize, um, you know, as they come in and we understand what it is they're looking to do. Um, so scaling could uh, could look like that, where we we just sort of get focused and, and specialize a little bit. Um, but ultimately, um, Growing the company, uh, going away from and and you know creating more visibility over the 20 years, as Yanni mentioned, uh, we've been very fortunate with uh, a lot of networking and and word of mouth. I mean, we're out in front of people, um, but um, continuing to do online uh, creative, you know, to create that visibility um, is is really where we're moving towards, and um, you know, getting a little creative. Yeah. And, and then if I add a little bit more context here uh, from the stream research side, the, one of the verticals Jody's mentioning is we've taken our process from globally to locally. Uh, so we we pursued a, a stream community to kind of rebrand South Scottsdale several years ago, and it created the it caught the attention of the city of Scottsdale. And now in the last few weeks, we launched a a stream community that's engaging all of the city of Scottsdale to really define, you know, get the voice of the citizen uh, perspective around city issues, programs, policies, diversity, inclusion, uh, and, and especially around uh, the more important things, that, as important things as smart city initiatives. Uh, so the, there's a Scottsdale was founded on the premise of uh, the community coming together that formed what today is Scottsdale that we know. And this community now is 12 months and we're engaging two to five percent of households that will really lay a foundation for reshaping Scottsdale in the future. So 
I, we see this as an opportunity to building a manifesto and sharing this and engaging with other communities across the nation as well. Interesting, very interesting. So um, it seems like there's a balance there between creating um, more visibility to Adam, uh, you know, to drive potentially some organic traffic, but also sounds like you're balancing that with, you know, um, trying to be more localized in, in the communities as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we're here to support our community, uh, whether it's just the local cities to the state, uh, but everybody, uh, the world's changing rapidly, right? And uh, what we found is that these groups, whether it's a city or a company, need to be proactive and not reactive. So getting a pulse on their uh, constituents or end customers is really going to make a difference in the future for everybody. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, I'm excited to, to see how things evolve with you and the organization and ideally with, uh, with, with obviously with stream and maybe some of the products that you're taking to market. And I want to give you the opportunity to let our community know, like how, how can people find you? How, if they want to get a hold of you, uh, what's, what's the best way for people to, to reach out? Um, sure, they can reach out uh, to any one of our, um, either uh, website uh, where we have a, a contact us, um, or they can reach out directly to Yanni or I um, at our email addresses. Um, Yanni um, is uh, ydaros at atom-inc.co, a little complicated. Um, and then Jody D at atom-inc.co. Um, um, We'd love to hear from you directly and answer any questions. Beautiful. Yeah, everyone go check out adam-inc.co um, to check out some of their, their products and services. Hit up Yanni and uh, and uh, and Jody as well to you know help you and kind of you know taking you know a product from from strategy to planning and development um, to distribution. Those are the services that they can help you and ideally penetrating you know your market and your in your segments. So. Um, before we wrap things up, Jody, Yanni, anything else that um, you know you want to leave our audience with? Anything we haven't talked about? You you want to cover? Well, no. I, I oh, go ahead. It's just uh, perseverance, right? Mm -hmm. No matter uh, how good or bad things are, you have to stay dedicated to your vision and embrace the the tools and the techniques that you need to to get to that point of success, whatever it is whether it's a startup getting their ideas off the ground or companies that are struggling uh, because they don't have enough resources, right? To pull those ideas together because uh, ultimately they, they have to, you know, scale their businesses. So we've found that we can help service the solopreneurs uh, and all the way up to global companies. So we're here to help in the long run. Mm -hmm. And I just like to say, stay curious and be creative always. Yeah. Yeah, stay stay dedicated to the vision. If it's on the to do list, um, there's there's help out there um, to help you and, and crossing that off your to do list, whatever that product uh, or innovation might be. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, everyone, go check out adam inkco um, and reach out to Jody and Yanni. I think I've learned a lot about both of you, and I, I definitely enjoyed this conversation and uh, learning about Adam and your services and stream research and you know how that can affect you know, uh, affect the organizations and individuals you guys are partnering up with. So I appreciate you being here and uh, sharing your story. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much. Brian. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. bad. That wraps up another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Have a great rest of the day.